بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي ونسلم على رسول الكريم أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته فقد قال الله تعالى في القرآن المجيد في سورة المائدة وتعاونوا على البر والتقوى ولا تعاونوا على الإثم والأدوان صدق الله العلي العظيم Allah the Lord of wisdom رب الحكمة proclaims in the glorious Quran in Surah Al-Ma'idah, chapter 5, ayah verse number 2, cooperate with each other in the promotion of righteousness and piety. At the Claremont Main Road Masjid, we have, for the past five years, been sounding an alarm about the growing threat of sectarianism creeping into our local Muslim community. During the past few years, the South African Human Rights Commission have been receiving a litany of complaints of discrimination and hate speech directed at individual Muslims, either because they profess to be Shiites or because they refuse to declare Shiites as kafirs and outside of the fold of Islam and therefore they are construed to be so-called Shia sympathizers. I suppose many of us who spoke today would come under that category. In one case the funeral prayer, the Salatul Janazah, of a foreign national who was brutally murdered when his Janazah came to a masjid, it was refused entry because he was a Shia. In another case which is currently being adjudicated in the South African courts, a prominent radio mufti not only declared all Shias as kafirs, but also those who refuse to declare Shias as kafirs as fasiqs. Now much of this hate speech and vitriol is not by accident, it is actually deliberately fomented And a lot of it happens on the social media forums. A group calling themselves the ADL, like sounds like the Jewish Defense League. Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'at Defense League, ADL Shia Awareness South Africa. This group acts as a front for those who do not wish their hands to be solid because you don't know who they are. They are Abu this and Abu that. I can be, my elder son is Jihad. I can also be Abu Jihad and you won't know who I am. You can check it yourself. I'm not making this up. By those who do not want their own hands to be solid and they are sanctioning and giving legitimacy to this through their silence and their non-condemnation during December 2017, just a few months ago, with the reopening of the Ahlul Bayt Center in Ottery, this anti-Shia sectarianism and hate speech reached a peak with a warning being issued for people to stay away from this opening ceremony. And some prominent Muslim leaders who had the courage, not like myself, who weak need, they had the courage to go there and attend the opening. They were severely chastised. This is the toxic environment and dangerous hate speech and discourse that started permeating and infiltrating the local Muslim community late in 2017. And very few people were willing to speak out against it, fearing 
that they will be labeled as Shia sympathizers. Now, it is against this disconcerting background, and it is within this context that the Cape Accord was given birth to and was conceived in December 2017 by a few courageous organizations and leaders. The Cape Accord was a welcome intervention and therefore something that we at the Claremont Main Road Masjid fully embraced and continue to embrace. Now, in Ramadan 2018, after the horrific attack on the Imam Hussein in Masjid in Durban on Thursday the 10th of May 2018, where the assailants slit the throat of one person, stabbed another to death, and set the Masjid library on fire, it has become even more critical to embrace the anti-sectarian message of the Cape Accord. Much more, however, needs to be done to educate and to popularize it amongst local communities. And more ulama organizations must be encouraged to sign it, and copies must be posted at all masajid in the front, locally and nationally. Ordinary Muslims like ourselves need to familiarize ourselves with the content of the Cape Accord and the direction it offers towards greater tolerance, good neighborliness, and love and brotherhood and sisterhood amongst different Muslim groups. In conclusion, in the aftermath of the Imam Hussein Masjid attack in Durban, there were malicious rumors that the attacks had been orchestrated by Egyptians, and later they became Iranians. We must therefore not be naive to the possibilities of Ajan provocateurs, of outside forces intent on sowing discord among Muslims by exploiting the vulnerabilities of people's sectarian views. The source of these rumors should therefore form part of the investigation to apprehend the perpetrators and bring them to justice. We also note with concern that it has been three weeks now and the perpetrators of the attack on the Imam Hussein Masjid in Durban, they are still at large. So we once again call on the South African police services and the Hawks to intensify the investigations and to apprehend the perpetrators and to bring them to justice. May Allah protect us all from the scheming of conspirators, from the self-righteousness of extremists, and may He guide all of us to the best means and instruments to put an end to sectarianism in South Africa, and we believe that the Cape Accord is one modest instrument in that direction. Shukran for your patience with me.